Okay, so in order to get the pine pump primed, prime pumped, uh, I thought I would at least put up the, the homeworks so that I've got the last two homeworks screenshotted in here and then we can answer questions on those and then that'll lead to other questions that I'll need to do on the scratch paper. So, sounds good? All right, so like dig through your homeworks, see if there's anything in here that um, you're confused about that we can, that we can discuss. It's just the last two homeworks, I think, it's, that's on this test. As far as I looked back and I thought, no, the third one was on the previous test with the Jablonski diagram. So the ball's in your court. <clears throat> Okay, this one here? Okay, very good. So, um, let's see. All right, so this is one of the things I said early on. I don't know if you remember me saying it, but it's as, I'm as, as serious as I can be about it. If it comes down to like whether you're like at that 64 or whatever, 65 or whatever the break point is for a C, um, I always come back to see if you could draw a pie bond. Right. <laughs> and it, I mean, that's sort of the breaking point. Like, I mean, that's where, which way is the needle going to go? D or C, right? C, you continue on. D, you got to do something again, you know? And so I drew the coordinate system here. I've got the molecule here. Can you draw the carbon carbon pi MO yourself with the molecule shown like this? Okay. So what do I do if I want to show the carbon carbon pi? Now, I don't need to draw it to know the symmetry because I know that it's along the Z axis, right? The P orbitals coming out of the plane of the paper are the PZ orbitals. So how would I draw the PZ orbitals on this, on these carbons? That's the one where I drew this sort of off-centered circle a little bit like this. and the half moon on the back. And it was shaded in. Can you see that those are P orbitals coming in and out of the paper? And they're the same shading above and the same shading behind. And so that's the, that's the pi bond. That's the pi bond. And that is a, a Z um, symmetry. So I need to go to the D 2H, so I need to know that. This is a D2H molecule. We go to that character table. Hopefully, I, I don't think I have that in here. <laughs> uh, I got D infinity H and uh, D3H. Yeah, okay. So let's go find that. Escape out of this. Let's keep my notations. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, just bear with me while I grab all of this. Here's the D2H one. Copy that. Yay. Oh, let's see, let's copy paste it as a picture so I can make it big. All right. So we, we determined that those are the PZ orbitals 
you see on this this positive end of the z axis is all one shading and the back end of the z axis is an opposite shading so that's the same as plus and minus so it has the symmetry of z and so we go find z in the character table right here and so this is z whoops undo i gotta make this big. all right so this is z right here and so it's going to be b1 u so we go back and it's B1U, so it should be this one. Just for grins, let's draw the the um, anti-bonding orbital, the pi star. Okay, so I'm going to draw the circle up here like this. and the half moons in the back. And it's just changing the shading. I'm gonna leave the left one the same as it was, but then I'm gonna shade the front of this one. So that's the pi star. <coughs> and even though this is not a diatomic, we can identify the pi and the pi star. Okay, all the others, like the something like this. Here's what typically, when I see somebody screw this up, Okay, when, when I say they can't draw a pi bond, what, do I, what am I looking at, right? And I get the exam and I say, let's see if they can draw a pi bond. Okay, so this is the wrong way. Um, no, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you up front, no. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> As they come along and they see that, and you see how all the, there's no dashes and no wedges. So these are all in the plane of the paper. And then they draw the orbital like this. It looks like a pi bond, but it's not oriented correctly with the rest of the molecule. That's not a pi bond, okay? That is something that's going to be working in the sigma framework, okay? Like this. Now, depending on how I shade these hydrogens, it could be bonding with the hydrogens or anti-bonding with the hydrogens. Let's go ahead and shade it this way to make a bonding interaction. So see, this is four sigma bonds. It's supporting four sigma bonds. It's not a pi bond. Um, and so, yeah, there's a node right here, but this whole side of the molecule is like that. This whole side of the molecule is shaded. <clears throat> it's in the plane of the paper. It's not a pi bond. Okay, you might say that that's pi type interaction on the carbons. Yeah, it's side on with the p, p orbitals. But, but when we're talking about the pi and the pi star in a molecule like this, it's the ones that are out of the plane, above and below the plane of the sigma bonding framework. <coughs> okay, what if I drew this one where the carbons were interacting like this? Well, let's just draw this right here. This one like this. That's straight up sigma interaction. That's not a um, not a pi because it's end on. So that's not going to be anything related to a pi type interaction. So, does everybody understand the difference? Now, what if I sh sometimes and this I may have confused some students one year. One year I drew it on the exam like this. I wanted to make it easy to draw the 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 pi bond, maybe in a way that, that you wanted to like visualize it. So I drew a wedge like this and a dash like this. Do you see what's going on now? Can you predict what's about to happen? How would I draw the p orbital on this one? The pi orbital, the pi bonding orbital. This one I would draw like like this up here. I would draw this this orbital up here. You see, it's above the plane of the molecule. Okay, so this one and this one are the same. Can you see that they're the same? I've rotated that sigma framework sideways, and now I'm looking at above and below the sigma framework. So those wedges and dashes are super important. That's like so important for your chemistry art. <laughs> you got to know how to read the structure. And it's, I mean, 
I know this was important in organic when you're trying to figure out chirality or this or that. I mean, what's what's the wedge telling me? What's the dash telling me? What's you know? And so just continue on using that kind of thinking, this spatial thinking. Um, okay, so then we um, so seven eight eight is uh, use the ethene coordinate system. What's the symmetry of the carbon carbon pi star mo? Okay, so here's the pi star. Now, remember the z-axis is coming out the front, so that's z, and this is the x-axis coming out this way. <clears throat> and so looking in that z-x plane, do you see the plus minus plus minus? So let's let's draw that x-axis out both ways in the z-axis, both like that. So this is, can I put a plus z and a minus z, right, just to show you that you got minus z in the back, plus x, minus x over here, just to show you the positive and negative values. So here we have plus z times uh, plus x, so this is a plus, and then here we have minus z times a plus x, so that's a minus. Here we have a minus z times a minus x, so that's a plus, and here we have a minus x, a plus z, that's a minus. See that plus minus plus minus interaction, that's what you get when you have two axes times each other. So this one is going to have x z symmetry. You just have to figure out, whenever you see that shading, that's that's shaded, unshaded, shaded, unshaded, you know, there's nodes between them all, um, you know you have two axes times each other, so you got to figure out which two axes, and it's, it's the two axes that they're in the plane with. So the xz plane is defined, and then you have those orbitals in that plane. <coughs> So we go to the character table and we find XZ. So here's XZ. So it's going to be P2B2G. All right. And then what's the symmetry of Y polarized light in this coordinate system? You see, we're building up the. Um, the transition dipole moment integral a piece at a time. So we're looking for Y polarized light. So down here is Y. It's B2U. So it's this one. What type of light would be absorbed in a pi to pi star transition in ethene? So I'm you got all these things, you got ethene up there. And so what we're asking is um, how can we get top row out of these three? I had at least these two symmetries. So we've got um, the pi star is B2G. That's pi star. And the pi is B1U. And so we have this question here. What, what light goes in, in between? So we need to turn a B1 into a B2, right? So we've got, to, we've got to take this B1 and multiply it by something so that when it comes down here, it's going to be a B1G. Because anything times itself, no, I said B2, B2G, sorry. So anything times itself is going to be A1G, right? So we need to find out using the direct product table what will give us a B2 from a B1. You see the problem? It's kind of like Sudoku with a different square missing. Okay, so we've got to um, go get the direct product table for for this. Let's see. Here we go, down here. Okay, I'm just gonna paste it right here. Let's keep this. Oh, let's undo that and let's paste this in a picture. All right. So we've got a B1 and we need to get a B2. So do you see this right here? Let me make this show here. We've got a B1 
and we need to get to the B2. So we need to multiply it by a B3. So this is what we want. And so then we go back to the character table and we find a B3 here and that tells us that it's X polarized light. So X polarized light will give us the transition. So let's just show that. So if we put X polarized light in here, B3U, then we can do the whole thing. So let's just show that. So this is the pi, this is the pi star, this is X polarized light. So B3 times B1 is B2, U times U is G. And then we bring this down, draw our angle brackets, B2 times B2 is A1, G times G is G. And so we have the integral over all space of the top row, so it's allowed, so X polarized light would allow this transition. Okay. It kind of makes sense. If you look at this right here, if we've got this, this um, wave function, and we want to turn one of these, we want to flip the other one. If we multiply by X polarized light, that's odd in the X direction. So it's going to have, like if we take this coordinate system here, and this is X, if we plotted, uh, you know, F of X equals X, it would look like this. It would have a negative region and a positive region. And if light's coming in like that and it's polarized along that axis, it's going to flip one of those orbitals. And then you've got compatible with the pi star, it's going to look like a pi star. So once it looks like the pi star, you have a lot of overlap. So that integral is going to be non-zero. So just visually, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Hopefully you can see it. That coming in with this, you could flip one of those orbitals and make it look like this. And if it looks like this, it's compatible, and there'll be overlap, and that integral will be non-zero. Okay. Let me go ahead and put it here aloud. So if you were showing your work, this would be what you would show, and that would be full credit. I'd be like, yeah, you understand what you're doing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that was the last, the last one there. Yeah. What about the next one, the next homework? Or, I mean, it, I'm not pushing you, but any other questions? Okay, let's go on to the next one then. Here's this MO diagram. This was the thing that I was, uh, that I changed on the homework. There were some G's here, and I erased them. On the individual atomic orbitals, it's, it's just a finer point. That once they're combined in the middle of the molecule, then you know if it's G or U. So, yeah. Did y'all like this type of question with the boxes? And then you can answer like what's in the boxes? Because um, I and probably will do something similar on the, on the exam because I like this too. You got the big diagram there. You're not having to waste a lot of time making it. And then, um, you can answer questions about it. We, I don't remember talking much this year about isoelectronic, okay? That's what's going on right here. This whole business of these cations and stuff, anions and everything. <clears throat> so if we look up here, you know, this is O2, and it ends up being this, um, it's called, a, it's a triplet state. You have two unpaired electrons. 
Well, I should have asked you that instead of told you. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, what is the net spin on this? Net spin. So you look at it, so you've got spin ups and spin downs, right? They cancel each other out when they're spin paired, but these don't cancel each other out. So you have a plus one half and a plus one half. So the net spin S is equal to little s one plus little s two. Okay, so it's equal to one half plus one half. Okay, so it's equal to one. And then the multiplicity is equal to two s plus one. So two times one plus one equals three, and we call that a triplet. <clears throat> so the multiplicity is the number of unpaired electrons plus one. So if you have two unpaired electrons, you add one and that's a triplet. If you have one unpaired electron, it's a doublet. You have one plus one. <coughs> this 2s is really just counting the number of electrons, right? Because they're each a half. So. so this could be, um, it could be O2. Give me another species that it's isoelectronic with. What other kind of diatomic would have this MO diagram? So let's go to the right, from O2 to F2. So if I did F2, how would I get this same MO diagram? F2 has two more electrons. So I would take those electrons away to get back to O2. So it'd be F2, 2 plus. Anybody follow that? We've made it, we've made a diatomic with two more electrons. Let's take them away and it looks like O2. So this has a double bond, right? And so does that. F2 has a double bond. So this is one of the predictions of MO diagrams that F2 would have a shorter bond than F2 dication, F2 2 plus, would have a shorter bond length than F2 because it was going from a bond order of one to two, okay? Can I make a F2 with a triple bond? What could I do with a F2 to make a triple bond? Yeah, four plus. You gotta remove uh, the electrons in pair since there's there's two each. So it has to be like an N2. In, so I wanna make F2 look like N2. So F2, four plus is equal to, or similar to, I'll say like that, or isoelectronic, let's do that. The equal signs are gonna confuse us. And then going the other other direction, like um, C two two minus C two two minus would have a triple bond. You see that? <clears throat> and so, do you do you see how MO theory? predicts these un unlikely events. So if you're looking at this and you say, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add two more electrons to C2 and my bond shrinks, it's a stronger force constant, it's it got a triple bond. So you might think, oh, adding electrons makes the bond tighter, right? But that's exactly the opposite of what happens to fluorine. You take electrons away and the bond gets tighter. So it's not just that whether you're adding electrons or not, it's the MO diagram that's telling you what's happening. It's depending on whether you're putting those electrons in orbitals that weaken the bond or strengthen the bond. If you don't understand MO diagrams, you can't understand that trend. It doesn't make any sense. Wait, I added electrons to dicarbon and it got stronger. I added electrons to fluorine and it fell apart. 
What is F2, 2 minus? This bond order of F2, 2 minus. And so if this is the fluorine diagram, okay, fluorine comes in with um, seven valence electrons, so there's 14, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay, so that's F2. And if we look at the, um, the bond order, we added up, we've got bonding here, antibonding there, so this is sigma, this is sigma star, this is sigma pi, pi, pi star, pi star, Okay, so we've got two, four, six, eight, eight bonding electrons, and then two, four, six antibonding electrons divided by two, so bond order of one for F2. So what if we do, if we do two, uh, F2, two minus, we put two more electrons in there. And this is the sigma star up here. And so now I've got eight bonding electrons, eight antibonding electrons. So the bond order of F2, 2 minus is zero. And I could look at the periodic table and I could say, if F2 has a bond order of one and I give two more electrons to F2, F2, 2 minus, it's gonna look like neon and di neon doesn't exist because of this. It's just as many electrons in the bonding as the antibonding, and so it doesn't, it might come together, but it falls apart because there's no net gain in terms of bonding versus antibonding. So it's like Ne2. And you only get that because of the MO diagram. Why does F2 fall apart, F2, 2 minus fall apart, but C2, 2 minus gets stronger. <laughs> See, that's a weird thing. If you didn't know MO theory, you couldn't explain that. It doesn't make sense. Is this helping? Okay, good. Brothers, it's just 8 a.m., <laughs> right? <laughs> <clears throat> this course definitely makes you stronger. Get up, get out of bed, get up there. It hasn't killed anybody, so hopefully it makes everybody stronger. <laughs> that mug, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Let's just fill in what's missing on all the blocks. Okay, how about that? So they're going through the questions. So uh, this is O2, this is oxygen. What kind of orbital is this? 2S, good, 2S. Um, what kind of symmetry? We'll just give the, the letters, not the little Gs and U. So what kind of symmetry would a 2S orbital have? <coughs> a, it'd be top row. So let's go find top row in the, Diatomic, this would be D infinity H, and it's A1G in top row, but we're just going to put the A1 because we're going to combine it in G and U combinations. So we'll put an A1 there. Same thing over here 2S, A1. It's going to have Cartesian symmetry of like X squared, Y squared, Z squared. Okay, so then we bring them together in uh, bonding combinations or in phase with each other. You see it's a sigma interaction. It's A1G. It's Z squared symmetry. Is everybody cool with that? So then what is this one? We did the sigma star already. What is this one? Let's pick this Cartesian symmetry first. What kind of Cartesian symmetry does this have? So you can always come up here and check the Cartesian coordinate system. See right here? And look at the shading. You see one side is shaded, the other side's not. Which axis is that along? Right, it's along the Z axis. There's still people that are confused on that. It's okay. 
If you're confused on that, let's get it straight now so you can just answer that. It's such an easy question if once you get it. Okay, once you don't get it, if you don't get it yet, it's not easy at all. You're like, I just don't get that part. It's okay. All right, so that's Z, Z right here. So it's along the Z axis that that color change occurs. So that's Z symmetry. We go find that in the character table, and it's going to be, is A1U? Okay, good. And it makes sense. We've mixed two A1s. We got an A1 in G and U combinations. Okay. So here's the three sigma, A1G, Z squared. Why is it Z squared? Notice it's the same shading on both ends of the Z axis. They're on the Z axis, so they're Z, but they're the same shading, so it's it's Z squared. If I squared the Z axis, all the negative Z values become positive, so that's why it's Z squared. Up here, this one is along the Z axis, but it's not squared. You see the shading changes as it goes along the Z axis, so that's going to be Z symmetry. It's a sigma star, and again, it's A1U. So we brought in two A1s, and we mixed them in G and U combinations. So we have a G down here and a U up here. So that's great, seeing a trend. Then here are the pi interactions, the side on. Notice this one up here is going up and down, so it's changing as I go up and down. So that's what else goes up and down, the x-axis. So the x-axis is going up and down, so that's the x symmetry here. And it's a pi interaction because it's side on interaction. And how do we get the U and G? Does everybody, re anybody remember that? Like just looking at this, how do you know if it's U or G? It has nothing to do whether it's pi or pi star. It just look at the inversion, see if it has an inversion. So inversion goes through the center mass of the molecule. So I pick a point down here and I go through the center mass of the molecule and look right there and it's changed color. So it's it's U, okay? It's not symmetric under inversion, so that's why it's U. This one is coming in and out of the paper on the left. It's a pi interaction. E1 orbitals mixed. It's, it's coming in and out of the paper, so it's Y. And then it's not symmetric under inversion. So again, going through that center of mass, if I pick this unshaded region here and I go back into the in the back, it's changed shading. So it's going to be U. So that's why that's an E1U. Let's look at the E1G combination. So notice this one is changing forward and back. So it's Y symmetry, but it's also changing left and right. So it's Z symmetry as well. So you combine the two. It's X, I mean, sorry, it's Y symmetry coming in and out, and left and right it's Z symmetry, so you know it's, it's YZ combination. So that's the YZ combination. It's pi star because there's a node that breaks the bond. It's pi because it's side on interaction, but there's a node that breaks the bond, so it's a star. It's E1 combination of atomic orbitals, but it's, uh, it's symmetric under inversion. So if here's the center mass of the molecule. I look at the opposite backside. I come through the center mass to the front and it's the same shading. So it's a G. This one over here is a little easier to see perhaps. So the pi star interaction, it's side on interaction with some H6 pi. There's a node that breaks the bond. So it's a star. Um, we have it changing up and down. So that's X changes. And then it's changing left and right, which is Z change, so that's X, Z. It also has that plus, minus, plus, minus, so I know it's that combination. There's several ways of answering that question or, or thinking about it. You can see that plus, minus pattern and figure out what plane it's in. It's in the X, Z plane. Or you could say, look, it's changing in the X direction, and it's changing in the Z direction. So therefore, it's X times Z. We brought in some E1 orbitals to make this. We need to decide whether it's G or U. Find the center mass of the molecule, pick a spot on the molecular orbital, and invert through that center mass and see if the color changes. The color does not change, so it's a G. Okay. That help? I think it's good to walk you through that again, piece by piece. Okay, and then this top one we've already done, um, 
That looks like a U and a G combined. I'm going to erase that underline. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> um, this, this one, this rectangle here. So, this is a 2p orbital. But which 2p orbital is this? And don't be, don't do it by elimination. This is the X and that's the Z. <laughs> you see, it's coming in and out of the paper. So the X, the Y axis, the Y axis is coming in and out of the paper. So that's 2PY. Okay. And then uh, it's an E1 because the Y and the X are on the E1 row. And I'm going to refrain from putting a U or a G on that. So same thing over here. I didn't want you to look on one side and let's look over the other side and see what it was. So this is also 2PY E1. Okay. I'm going to have some fun now. Any, this is your last chance for a question on the homework before I do something new. Yes. Um, yeah, G's and U's are definitely fair game. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the test in my head yet, but um, I've written most of it. I was just modify some things, um, but yeah, it, it definitely. Is there a question you have about it that you're not clear on that I can clear up? Because I definitely want to clear it up. Okay, okay. Let's do um, let's do something a little new. It's it's com combining the hydrogen one s orbitals that we did with the two times one and minus the others and so on. But let's do it with the p orbitals, and let's play with this fun little anion, the cyclo cyclopropenyl anion. <laughs> okay. So, ever heard of that? Okay, so prop, how many carbons do we have? Three, very good. Propene, we have three carbons, so it's C3. E means we're gonna have a double bond in there, okay? And it's an anion, okay? This is uh, C3H3, okay? And so if I were to draw like the Lewis dot structure of this, this is what it would look like. And I'll have an extra electron left over, so I stick it on that little deficient carbon. <laughs> okay, and I put a bracket around it, make it a minus one. Fun molecule, because it's planar. It's got PZ orbitals that are not used. What's the, let's do the point group of this guy. If, if we say that it's an uh, equilateral triangle, which it may or may not be, I don't know, I'm not an organic chemist. <laughs> definitely got some ring strain, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so let's let's pretend it's an equilateral triangle. So what would we do with this? Okay, is it linear? No. <laughs> right? Does it have uh, like multiple C3 axes? I'm going through the flow chart in my head. Multiple C3 axes. Right? No, it's it's not like a multiple C3 axes. That question in the flow chart is sending you over to octahedral and tetrahedral and icosahedral and this is none of those okay um, so does it have any rotational symmetry does it have any rotational symmetry again if it's confusing you with this double bond and the dot i'm saying pretend that these are all three equal bonds like equal length because there might be some resonance structures right you could draw three resonance structures on this okay so that kind of equalizes those bonds okay so what's the what's the highest uh, symmetry axis? Yeah, I heard it. C three, a little tiny voice. <laughs> so and so we're gonna pick that C three axis and we're gonna make that the Z axis, right? So C three axis. All right, and so we'll just draw the um, X and the Y here. So here's our coordinate system. 
does it have a three since we have a c3 axis does it have three perpendicular c2s <laughs> you're like uh, <laughs> burning those brain cells this morning yeah, it does, right? It, my, my my drawing is, you know, that's why I tell you work on your work on your uh, art skills because mine are lacking. This, this is a C two here. You see that? I can exchange those two hydrogens and those two carbons spinning around that axis, and this is one here. Why is it not working? That's a C two, and this is a C two. You see those? Okay, so that puts us over in the D groups, right? D something something, D three H, D three D, D something. So we've got a C three axis, so we know it's D three, and we need to determine whether it's D or H. Okay, and so what is the question for the H? H, what does stay H stand for? Horizontal. So it's asking, is there a horizontal plane of symmetry? Well, the horizontal plane is perpendicular to your biggest axis. So C3 axis is the Z axis. So the horizontal plane is the XY plane. And does this molecule reflect in the XY plane? Yes, <laughs> because it's planar. So by definition, anything in that plane, just the top halves of the atoms reflect into the bottom halves of the atoms. Nothing moves, but it's definitely a reflection plane, so D3H. So that would be our 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 um, point group for this molecule, and we would have the D3H character table. And so let's draw the three orbitals. I'm just going to draw the organic version of this molecule, right? Does everybody see this? This is now that. So I can draw the orbitals on there. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to draw three of them because we're running out of time. So what is one combination of the PZ orbitals that is all bonding? So all bonding. What could I draw for that? Right, because you know that's the simplest one. Let's draw them all in phase with each other. We know that's going to be the lowest energy one and uh, it's all bonding. So how do I draw PZ orbitals? If I've got the Z axis coming out of the plane of the paper, then I draw those circles and half moons, right? We just did that with the oxygen. And I'm just gonna shade the back side of all of them. Makes it easier to see. What do you think? Pretty easy, right? The all bonding one is the easiest one. Just no nodes, breaking the bonds. That's the lowest energy one. Big box, low energy, no curvature, no nodes. Okay. Now we get into the anti-bonding ones or the ones with nodes. I'll say out of phase. And we have three things, and we got to make two molecular orbitals. What do we do in that situation? Remember, it's always that. It's always this. It's always the two. Um, we'll call these. Uh, let's call these um, one. Uh, let's call this top one one, and then two, and then three. Okay, can we do that? So it's going to be two. Um, PZ1 minus PZ2 minus PZ3. Do you remember that? That that idea, we have three things. i got to make two objects with it. I'm going to use one of them twice and then not use it in the other one. And then this one over here is PZ2 minus PZ3. All right, one minute. We can do it. Okay, so two times the PZ, so I'm going to draw this one huge, big circle, and a big half moon in the back. 
So that's the 2PZ1. Okay, got it? Straightforward. Now the others are going to be the opposite shading and a little smaller. And so these are shaded in front. And you see the node? The node is um, along the x-axis. Node. And then this node is going to be along the y-axis. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> uh, I tried to erase and I erased everything. Okay. Okay. So this. Whoa, what happened? Oh, no. How do I get rid of that? <laughs> Can I get my pen? Oh, how do I do this? Okay. Escape every works every time. All right. So then this one has a node down the middle. I'm going to be very careful with this node. Right? And that's the PZ2. So that's over here. Um, shaded in back. And the PZ3 shaded in front. Makes sense. Is that clicking for you now? We did that with the hydrogen orbitals. We did that with bond stretches on a methyl group where we had three bonds, but we needed to make two combinations. And it was two of one minus the other two, and then nothing of that first one and the opposite of the other two. This is how you take a linear combination of three things and, and, and break it down. So we had three PZ orbitals and we made three bonding type interactions with them. Uh, so three in, three out. The all bonding one takes up one of the three. And so for the other two, we've got to figure out how to get the out of phase combinations to make two combinations. And so that's always how it works out mathematically. All right, y'all have a great day. We're, we're going to do great on this test. <laughs> okay. I'll put this video up later so you can go through it again if you're kind of fuzzy.